Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Picard, Season 2. So, welcome everybody. I'm Addiction Master on most social media, and I'm continuing my high on Star Trek since I just did Strange New Worlds, um, Prodigy, Star Trek Prodigy was an animation, and Lower Decks has been amazing. We'll not really discuss Discovery, maybe a tiny bit, but it's just insane. I see some quality there, here and there. And I saw a little teaser for Season 2 of Star Trek Picard, and I got a little hopeful. I have a little, you know, spark of hope that ignited. Maybe it was the teaser. However, let's get this out of the way up front. I fucking hated Picard Season 2. Uh, issues I had with Season 1 are multiplied and made worse by just nonsense garbage. I mean, what can this show do right? I'll, I'll get that off the bat. Right off the bat because... I, I don't know what else to say, and I'm not really into this uh, everything sucks type thing, but I gotta be truthful, so we've got Star Trek season Picard Season 2. Season 1 I'm not happy with. I have a podcast on it. I don't see the value much of um, destroying or, you know, ruining some legacy of this Great television show with great characters. And although they tried, you know, it just didn't sit well with me. This is also, I think, created by the same people. Um, I don't really know and I don't really care to look into the deepities of it. However, I will say this. I tend to not look at other reviews or go too deep into something until I finish watching it. When I finished watching this, I didn't go look at reviews. I went to go look at the interviews with the creators, the writers, and Patrick Stewart, and etc. So as of writing, as of doing this, I'm not really too aware of what the, you know, the, the mindset is of this show in general. Um, maybe... After season one of Picard, I did do a little bit of a dive just to, you know, because I usually do that just to see how I resonate with other people and, you know, find people that are fucking insane. So, season two of Picard, I don't like, and it actually made me upset in a way that it's uh, another missed opportunity. I love Patrick Stewart. Love just as a human being. What he's done with his life, his career, the causes he fights for in real life. Um, stand up, man, it seems like. I mean, we could all peek behind and open up people's closets. But in general, Sir Patrick Stewart, I'm just a fan of. I just want him to be happy and do well. But you should have put your foot down because all these interviews, all these behind the scenes stuff clearly show that he just wanted to do his own thing and made sure he had control. And I don't know if I want to get deeper into it with how shitty these fucking writers are, if they care or not, but just holy shit with this show, I just don't know. But I'm going to praise a heap of love for a little bit on a certain portion of the show. Now, this portion has to do with a woman actress who was in the first season. And her name is Orla Brady. According to the wiki thing, she's an Irish theater actress, is gaining notoriety. She is amazing, captivating. Even in season one, I loved her. I loved just her natural essence or, you know, being on the camera. It just loves her. Uh, her quiet uh you know speaking moments were great and even her action scenes were great very hard to do i mean and she's one of those actresses where you're surprised you haven't seen it before a lot 
But everything she's in, she elevates and makes amazing. So, Ola Brady, she plays uh, Laris and also another time. Oh, it's fucking crazy. But you meet her ancestor, and apparently everybody's ancestor just looks alike. Like, whatever. Just, just starting me on the fucking track of shitting on the show. But Ola Brady amazing in everything I'm guessing she does because just from what I can remember her from and watching this just made me fall in love with her more as bad as this season is as fucking much as I hate this show I'm gonna give her praise I just love to see her on camera there is another show that did this to me with um uh there was a show uh, uh, The Expanse right and it has an actress in it and I am in love with her. She's just amazing. Just to see her on the screen, her performance. And then, you know, in retrospectively, you go, oh my God, she's amazing in everything. And you're just, um, you're just amazed at how, you know, this, this happened with, uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica, the, the remake type thing where, um, the woman who played the president was amazing. And the Expanse has the same thing. It's, uh, I think her name is, uh, Shorea Adgadashlu, whatever. She's fucking amazing. And from Iran, I think. Uh, she plays in the Expanse, uh, Avandazla, they call I don't know what the fuck her name is, but she's a fucking amazing. And in this show, All of Brady, I just, I just could watch her do all the fucking shitty scenes. And it made them. You know, it let me get by. But so, you know, you got to pick out some things that, you know, really touch you. And her scenes with uh, Patrick Stewart in the show. In the beginning, the first episode, it almost tricked you into thinking they're riding the ship. They're, they're, they're setting the course properly. And, we're, you know, we're back to Star Trek. Well, they don't really give a fuck. It's apparent because... There's a quiet scene with her and uh, Patrick Stewart, and it feels like this could be the evolution of John Luke Picard, but you really find out it's fucking Patrick Stewart just playing himself, basically. It just works with her in most of the scenes, and then because of time travel, he meets her again, but it's not her. It's uh, ancestor, and this happens with fucking soon. Uh, Brent Spinner's character, Data, gotta put him in everything, whatever. This show tries to piece together the remnants of the first season, which I didn't like in general, and just shits to bed on almost every fucking aspect of the show. Not only did I have my normal, oh my god, in my head that I get bounces around because. You know, some people have actually, they can have conversations with their, in mind, right? And it's a, it's a thing. And here I am just going, oh my God. And there is one time in an episode where out loud, involuntarily just came out. I said, oh my fucking God. And it shocked me to hear my voice saying it. Because there were times, all right. I talked about this before. The original Star Trek, 1960-something. They got a fucking shitty control box, and they're moving Spock around because his brain was removed. All right? I will fucking watch that. Recognize what it is for the time. The right thing. Whatever they tried to fucking do, I will take it over this. I just don't understand when you have this quality actors, right? I mean... All right, there's a couple of performances in this show I don't like in general, but we've got the Star Trek Lord of Legacy. We've got some people associated with talent, and you just waste it. Like, what the fuck is going on? And breaking your own rules, making your own rules, setting them up, and letting them just fucking disintegrate in front of your eyes, and just shocked at so many decisions in this fucking show you didn't is it bad enough you took seven of not whatever the fuck the bog check seven of nine from voyager you put him in the first season of picard fine 
But you have to just fucking muddy the water and make everything unlikable. And yeah, I could see even certain aspects of the first season saying things like, you know what I said about Discovery, I'm just not sure what I said about Picard in general, but this is not my Star Trek, and I could see people liking it. I'm sorry. Season 2 of Picard is shit. It's just fucking... It's just not good. It's fucking filler nonsense with words that are spoken that just are gibberish at times and are just trying to come across and hit you with every fucking modern day problem in a, in a season of fucking nonsense. Because of course it has to start off and you get the feel of Star Trek and maybe the fucking racist, specious, fucking genocidal federation from the first season are better now and is oh, but all of a sudden it's a year and something fucking year later and the fucking sword-wielding elf guy is now in Academy after one year. It's just, we're all fucking friends. We're family now. Okay, whatever. And we're going to be put in a situation. It was okay. Okay, this is how Star Trek would start maybe, right? Okay, fine. And then it just fucking tumbles into God, just fucking a nonsense. You can't set up your rules like this and just break them and have bullshit reasons for things. And then you bring in the actor Q, John DeLance, I think it's called. Amazing. He does his best in this because what can you do? Like, I, I can admit, as much as I love Patrick Stewart, he's not playing Picard. Sorry, he's not. He's not even playing an envisioned, evolved Picard, in my opinion. But, Q actor comes in and John Delancey, and he's fucking amazing. He just does what he can with the shit they give him. So, yeah, you're going to find bright, bright spots. I'm a nerd. I'm a Star Trek fan. I love it. You know, it's so much um, joy to my life that I could look back upon. And even in crazy times when I talk about me setting a mirror up when Star Trek, uh, the original series with Kirk, was playing reruns at 2 in the morning, and I, everybody would go to sleep. I put him in. Um... Yes, I'm, I'm easy to please. Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Not perfect. But I can I was just enjoy it and having fun. And I came into this riding a high and convinced that, well, maybe not convinced, but with some hope that this was, holy shit, season two of Picard could be good. And oh, get to go get through 10 hours of this fucking shit to do the podcast or whatever. Like, I don't give a fuck about notes. I, like, I don't care about anything when... I gotta go through 10 hours of this shit. Like, waiting for some fucking revelation or some, you know, decent cohesion to the plot and understanding what's going on and what the stakes are and fuck, we're gonna go back to 2024, what, like two years from now or whatever, and bring up ice and climate change and every fucking thing you could think of. Really, this is how we had to do it? You know what you have here? You have a two-hour fucking movie that you can edit and make good. Maybe I'll grant that. A two-hour movie out of ten hours. And just structure it like a fucking real thing. Not this bullshit they put together here. And I could see this impacting someone like uh, Patrick Stewart and you know how much he's loved as a human and just for his work he's done him but just it's just rare i mean yeah we all find out things about you know maybe people we idolize and love whatever you know michael jackson or you know i love kiss and gene simmons is you know, supposedly a fucking cunt okay i get it and maybe there's a boundary between what you can permit anymore like oh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go out and support uh you know some Whatever. But in that balance, I could see this impacting someone like Patrick Stewart is going to look back on this and go, you know, I should have been reined in. Like, in season one, he does this fucking cosplay thing where he wears a patch and it's one of the most cringiest moments ever when I've seen him be done in an interesting, weird, quirky way in the original series. You know, it is you know, Dixon characters, hologram, 
uh, crime noir type detective things he'd like to do and getting a little crazier as season went on because this show doesn't care about any of that history. And like one of the first things I'm fucking thinking of is where's John Luke's brother? You're doing this deep dive about depression. You got to bring up everything, right? So when I say climate change and uh, immigration and uh, wealth equality, all this fucking nonsense. Yeah, it's also mental health shit and fucking, you know, it's just fucking enough. You try to do so much shit, and I can't even say it's uh, a quality that I, you know, admire with somebody who tries to push the limits, you know. Maybe what you could say about the first Matrix movie where, you know, you take chances and you go for it with, you know, your love and passion and it works. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to say. The original, or the remake of Battlestar Galactic is a great example of four seasons in and out. Bam. And you only have debates about how it wrapped up and where it went. And yeah, that could ruin things if you think about it in the sense of, you know, you got to your destination but you can look back on the quality of the show and, you know, yeah, we're going to pick out things and nitpick. And I like to do that sometimes with my friends. Sometimes they do it just to be a contrarian or just, you know, hold an opposite thing. Because I, I, I want to be honest with myself. And just trying to separate the I love something from feelings and how it entertains me and trying to be a critic about it and going, okay, how do we, you know, how do we justify its ranking or its, uh, you know, um, where it stands in Star Trek, because I guess that's where we're compared to, right? I can't even look at it like something like The Expanse, who took uh, the novelizations and ran with it pretty well, although I don't care past, like, season, whatever, four or five, in that sense, because I wasn't a fan of the books after that. But... You can see the quality, love, uh, you know, actors, the quality coming together, the chem chemistry. This is fucking bonkers. Uh, there are characters I don't even like. Like, just don't like. And then, characters that make no fucking sense. You've got a fucking elven warrior cutting people's throats in first season, decapitating people with a sword. And in, in a year, these people have become bonded, and he's a... Academy thing. Well, if you're going to do that, you better do everything right. Like, I say this a lot in my podcast, but I don't need to be coddled and uh, everything has to be done the way my brain wants it to be done. But do it well. There are plenty of fucking things. I say this sometimes like the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I, st I didn't want that. In no way, shape, or form did I want the new iteration of the fucking Guardians to be the movie they made. I wanted the old one. And I was probably wrong, right? From Vance Astro and the, you know, whatever the fuck. Okay. I'm going to try to be honest here. I can't see much quality in this fucking season. And this is Star Trek Picard. Like, the weight of this would be immense to my friends who know me very well. Because, again, if I can say this shit, like, I, I'll, I'll watch Green Lantern. And I know it's a bad movie. Like, it's... I mean, I walk through the points where you go, yeah, yeah, but I smile and have fun because I'm a nerd and a geek who loves Green Lantern since he was a fucking child. And, uh, you know, fine. I'll get through the fucking original... I've watched the original series and gone back. Just like I've done every iteration of Star Trek. Even Enterprise. Four seasons, which... Quality and got really good. I'll eventually go back and watch Discovery. But holy shit. Star Trek Picard Season 2. What the fuck are you doing? Like, there are... You're trying to do this fucking Q thing. And he's barely in it. Not given enough. And it centers around something that's been dealt with on episodes of The Next Generation. Okay. Picard? Has had a full lifetime, like over 40 fucking years, he lived with a woman, a wife, and had kids, and he had a family in his mind. But it's, it was real. It's a real life for him. This man knows fucking love. Like, the series on television progressed him in a way that was near perfection. Didn't like kids, stern, you know, by the book type guy. 
who starts to view things differently because he doesn't like being on a, a ship that has families on it and stuff. And it goes back to his past and it works. And then the movies jumped him to bypass the stuff. And, you know, I, I enjoy the movies. And they jumped him past to where he's actually changed. And you can see the Patrick Stewart coming out in him. And I'm fine with, you know, resonating and acknowledge the character that's in you that you portray and stuff. And those next generation movies aren't the best of the whole batch. And I'm enjoying them. I'll get through them. I'll debate. And I'll understand where I'll concede that they're not, it's not a good movie. But uh, this took that, because that's where they went off of, and just blow it out of the fucking water and spoilers by the way when you find out at the end of season one of fucking picard that he becomes a flesh fucking android robot and they play with this fucking theme but it is a missed opportunity of epic proportions that i can't see where it cannot go a certain way so this like season three already coming out and i don't know if it was filmed at the same time but for the love of all that's fucking holy in this world please take a step back and you're bringing back the old old characters now you've played with them a little bit right we got picard when we see some iterations here oh a troy and whatever we're in the first season Riker. no according to what they're saying season three is bringing back Worf and beverly and laforge okay so we can we see where it's gonna go I hope it's a course correction. I hope it's a real nod to them recognizing what they've done here. Just for me to even try to go through these fucking 10 episodes is fucking ridiculous because it's just bullshit built on top of more bullshit. There are filler episodes and nonsense. For instance, in Deep Space Nine, they had a fucking thing where they were going to the holodeck and they'd have this... Um, 1960s singer from Vegas type guy singing and he'd help them with therapy type thing. And it gave little tidbits of people doing things. This fucking show puts in this fucking chick who you don't really, a great actress probably, whatever the fuck her name is. And she plays um, Garotti or whatever. She becomes the, a spoiler. You know, she gets associated with the fucking bog, whatever. You know, they, they they form a connection. Fucking crazy. And it's just bad from beginning to end. Um, it, I, I My brain is scrambled from the bullshit because it just throws you off when you're in an episode and go, wait, it's not that they're not giving a shit about the TV show from the 60s with Kirk. Fine. Or let's go through them. Next Generation, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise. Even the movies, the new fucking Kelvin timeline movies and fucking quotate, whatever. Let's just say, you know. How do you not keep the fucking structure of your season you're in? And not only that, the season before that. You just finished, you finished season one. You've got season two. And you, like, you don't give shits about things. You bring back Whoopi Goldberg as Guinan, and I'm fucking, I had a smile. Like, they're all little precious, you know, gems you pick out of the fucking minutia and bullshit. And it's just worth what? It just doesn't fucking work. It's like, we're going to send a fucking crew... Back in time to 2024, highlight every fucking issue we have. And according to your universe, Picard becomes a genocidal fucking monster in an alternate universe because his ancestor never went on a space mission. And okay, so let's go, let's do this. Let's just deconstruct it in a way, right? Timeline set. Blah, 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 blah. In the past, Q convinces the ancestor of Picard to not go on this mission. And soon, the Genesis, the ancestor of 
fucking guy who created data and blah 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 great 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 ancestor bullshit becomes who they turn to as a savior and in that process in the years later remember it's 2024 when the timeline breaks and when picard is born he's born and raised to be a fucking hitler guy who decapitates people has a fucking trophy room i mean when people complained about season one, it's dark tone, it's fucking um, bullshit federation and the xenophobia, fucking racist species bullshit and how they just wanted to turn everything and make it, you know, dark times. They've got everything. Just throw Trump fucking rallies in there, disguise it as this, ice, whatever the fuck you, you can do. But don't even hold on to your structure. It's, this fucking chick who played... the. It's fucking one I love, right? All uh, Brady. So in the past, uh, fucking future, she's Laris. She's a love interest who loses her husband in fucking between the seasons. And it's supposed to be something like big fucking thing. Because now her and Picard have a chance. Because her culture is fucking, when they leave somebody, they go right to the next in love again. Because it's, that's the lesson learned. Whatever, fine. Right, but now when he goes back to 2024, they do a callback to an old TOS uh, Kirk episode with Gary Seven and a spinoff show they tried to fucking do from Star Trek about a fucking spy guy who's been hired by entities to correct the fucking timeline. All right, so this fucking chick gets introduced in a really cool way. So. Picard's looking for the Watcher. That's what they call, quote, quote, the fucking Watcher. Whatever the fuck. And he gets to an area, and a little girl comes up to him. Her eyes are glowing white. Tells him, you better do this, you better do this, and follow me. He does, he does, he follows her. And then they come across, and the guy brushes past him, and his eyes turn white, and the girl goes on her way a little confused. Now, this happens, let's say, two or three times. And what you're understanding is, and you're starting to realize is, oh, this person's using bodies as proxies, guiding to Picard to her to make sure he's not followed. That's fucking, that's pretty cool. And it, it, it kind of works, right? Then you see who it is, and I'm captivated because, like I said, this fucking actress is just amazing, in my opinion. I mean, just her on the camera. It's hard to describe, but people could just be on the camera and they don't need to say words, scream, and get crazy. It's just. The eyes, the look, the tilt of the head, that whole deal. Anyway, so she's the officer, and he's like, what the fuck? You look just like her. And then they do some bullshit later. But anyway, this ability of hers to hijack a body, control it, and then let it go and jump into another body could have been used to fucking end the fucking show and just got, made everything super easy. So I don't understand as a writer, as a someone, as someone who, whatever the fuck they do when they make a Bible and they make a cohesive outline, says to themselves, okay, we're going to do this, but we're not going to pay it off later. Like, why not make that her sacrifice in a sense where she's pushed to the limit of using this ability because God fucking damn it, you had fucking... Places where you could have used it, and it's blatantly in your face. Built up bullshit. And it's just one fucking thing. Go through these fucking episodes. It's mind-numbing. Because the first one's pretty decent. You get your fucking space anomaly, whatever. But you're but, but right away, my brain's going, why the fuck is Rios a captain of a ship? And it's a fucking new refit ship. And it's fucking made with the bog in mind. Like, what? And then Elnor, the fucking elf, is fucking in Starfleet, and then these people were fucking criminals. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. They got murder chick, doctor chick. They, they just fucking say she had temper. It's fucking crazy, because she's in a bar, gets hit on. Oh, you know what? I'm going to give another props. Putting her in a red dress was fucking awesome. It really came out striking. But you know what? Your slow motion and your shitty camera work? gave a fuck afterwards because oh my god just it just builds on it builds on it right then episode two blah blah blah, q we gotta solve this 
how are we in this dystopian? How are we in this crazy universe where I, Picard, am ruled the galaxy from the what is it? The World Razor, his fucking ship is called. Whatever. His trophy room has skulls of everybody: Dakot, fucking Gowron, Sarek, and he's got fucking pictures of people. Whatever, right? And he's he's a fucking lunatic. And it's the Confederation. The Confederation. Holy shit, they hit you over the head with every fucking thing they can. And go, whoa, we gotta stop this. Like, what the fuck happened? A, a ship showed up, a bull, bull tried to take over the fucking ship. I self-destructed. We're in an alternate universe. Then Q says, no, I put you here to show you something. But then it's Picard who has to go back to 2024? Like, Q didn't put him back in 2024 to learn his lesson. I, I don't know. And this is me. This is fucking nerd guy. I role play this stuff. I have fucking books and manuals of how to role play the game. All the technical babble, everything. I have novels written by fucking Shatner, no, nonetheless, some of them. Okay. I love this stuff. Not hard to please me. By the way, not hard for me to come on here and say I loved it, but it sucked. So, there's also that. It's also me just saying, hey, I don't think this is really good, but hey, I'm fucking loving it. And something to that effect might be The Mandalorian, where it's flawed as shit, and maybe it's the coming off the fucking shit that was th those Star Wars movies. I've said this before. But, you know, season two, it keeps its, it's got its strengths and it works with it. Just didn't learn nothing from season one, where you could have had me but didn't. And then you get season two, and you've got everything, and it's ultimately bullshit. And thank you for using the cameo for fucking the uh, Battlestar Galactica guy, he played Balta, whatever the fuck his name was. Really fucking good um, choice there. And it's just, you know, twisty, it's his father. And he's in his mind, and the chick who's got the fucking device that she could take over people's minds goes into his mind, and... Holy shit. <laughs> like. Bug fucking chick. Like, you got the fucking alternate reality where Picard's a maniac. A fucking lunatic. Monster. <clears throat> and they're celebrating Eradication Day. <laughs> like, this show said, oh, you know what? We don't like to complain about how dark the first movie is. The first season is. Let's show the first episode where everything's kind of back to normal. And then just make an alternate reality where we can just fucking do every shitty fucking thing ever. Like, look how shitty the homeless in the neighborhoods are. Look how fucking shitty the fucking trees are and the fucking chemicals, whatever. He's a fucking m monster in his timeline. And goes, what, what happened? Go to this fucking embassy and they have a Borg queen with no legs, no arms or whatever the fuck, maybe she had arms and she's their prisoner because in this timeline he fucking eradicated the book, whatever, fine, just fucking go with it, right mind you, this is the fucking like second episode or whatever, whatever fucking bullshit it's working with the queen she says, oh, it happened in 2024 Let's go. Then they do some bullshit with teasing you. Like, oh, well, Kirk's Enterprise went back in time. I mean, you were in a fucking movie where you followed the Borg back in time. Like, get to the fucking point. You know, the, like, so the Queen's going to do it. you got to get a cooperation. And then, by the way, like, most of the actions in the show are stupid. Like, they're not well thought out, written, connecting plot lines in tissue. It just doesn't fucking make sense. You know, in the first season, before they turned fucking Picard, because only Picard gets turned into an android fleshbot at the end of this fucking episode of the last season, the last episode. He's hit by a fucking explosion. It sends him flying, and you know the rest of the show should be him healing in a back to tank or some fucking bio bed or in some pike fucking wheelchair thing with his skin melted off, right? But we know you can't do that, and that's what this whole fucking season is. Like, you can't do what should happen here. Let's build up fucking nonsense tension. Let's have this fucking chick sing a fucking Pat Benatar song, Shadows of the Night. Like, what are you fucking doing? 
and let's drag out these fucking bullshit scenarios. Like, come on, you had a great Guinan cameo. You got a new play person to play a younger Guinan. Like, there are elements here you could have, and this has been done before. How many times have we seen Kirk's Enterprise going back in time? And more specifically, the DS9 episodes where they were back in 2024, like two years, like whatever it was, two years after this happens. Or I think it takes place in 2022. A anyway, like, just stop it. So you've got to do the whole fucking we're on Earth that's like hours because it's the same fucking time as we are. And let's use every fucking thing and not even do it delicately. Like, I've watched after the fact when I did my um, review of uh, Captain Marvel, uh, uh, the Marvel movie. And people were like coming on and saying about the woman thing and they talked about Infinity, uh, Infinity War, the end. And just like where they describe the social cues and the wokeness uh, factor being implemented into those movies. And you know what? If it was done, it was done better. Like, at least it was done with, you know, something I could understand and respect. This is bullshit. Like, just fucking craziness. And then we get to like three, four episodes and you're dealing with this and Rios, the fucking guy who you kind of like in the first season somewhat, but, you know, gives a fuck at this point. He's like, you know, he's got love interest. And where this fucking goes is insanity because it is, again, drilled in your head multiple times about how you can't fuck with the timeline. So guess what they do? They do everything possible to fuck with the timeline making everything stupid okay let's skip episodes let's get to the fucking end of this nonsense because your whole fucking journey in your show is trapped in 2020 fucking two gotta find out why q's doing all this and oh what's the twist spoiler q's dying possibly and he wants to give john luke the uh, introspective insight that he's never and this is true right because it's part of the show Picard doesn't let himself, like, have a wife. Although there was a fucking alternate reality where he was married to Beverly. And, like I said, there's an episode where he had a wife and kids. And he spent 40 years with them before he was... It's just... He has a fucking brother. And they, they've shown his mother. Like, this is not shit you can't just do a little research on and kind of fluff it up and make it palpable. Like, make it enjoyable for me. How hard is that? Like, it's not hard. Which makes this more fucking annoying. And in a way, it's weirder or worse than Star Wars, what they did to Luke and stuff. For some reason, I could... I put those out of my mind. Like, they don't exist to me. They're fucking garbage. Although, editor's note, uh, I do give The Force Awakens a pass. And maybe it all has to do with the chemistry and the Daisy Ridley stuff, whatever. I just don't know. I mean, you get into the end and this fucking thing wraps up fucking zip, zip, zim, bullshit, fucking one thing to another. There's a fucking scene, okay, where Seven of Nine and her fucking girlfriend, whatever, Raffi, and I don't want to even talk about Rafi's character and his whatever, because it might seem insulting to the actress, but that's enough, I guess. All right. There's some of the shittiest sets, some of the dumbest camera shots that they think are impressive. And they show it's a it's a it's a bad moment, man, and this is going this is gonna go bad. Because they have fifty Meters, fucking miles, I don't know. But between her and her friend, Seven of Nine, and the fucking... By the way, she's not a bull because of the time jump, whatever. She's president. Oh, my God. They made Seven of Nine president. President in the alternate timeline. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, okay? I don't want to fucking think about it. I don't even fucking want to. 
And I fucking started regretting it. Like, you know, what the fuck am I doing? Four episodes, five episodes, six episodes, seven episodes. Get to this fucking end of this shit, and it's just like... Did you really need all this? Like I said, it's two hours of fucking movie in here. And they got this fucking scene. It's fucking Seven and her friend. And between them and this ship, because holy shit, with bad fucking settings and lighting, the Borg Queen, new Borg Queen merge chick is coming for this ship and is going to take it. And between Seven and her friend are like 50 Borg assimilated special ops people. With machine guns, by the way. No fucking basis. Now, you might say, okay, but wait, 709 is a bug? No, she's not. And you might say, well, they're Starfleet trained? Fine. But they point out that they have a knife, a screwdriver, and a corkscrew, or an ice pick, maybe? And you know what this moment is supposed to be. This moment is supposed to be epic. It's supposed to be them racing across this open field that they've told you is there. How many combatants they have to finish and fight. And this is where you lose people you love. But guess what? You don't fucking love these people. And they don't do it. It's like they're on the fucking ship. And they show this camera shot. I mean, this is just like stuff that's just popping into my head. But if I wanted to structure a fucking critique of the episodes and go through them, it just falls apart. This whole fucking thing just falls apart. And added to season one, and going back and looking at some, because I haven't done the reviews yet, although I I did see a couple of thumbnails, so I can imagine. But I really went to look at, like, what what were the writers doing? Like, these fucking creative showrunners, whatever the fuck you call them. And the fucking, you know, the opening credits, like, this is just fucking amazing shit that goes on. And you pulled it off, and... Like, I don't know if you could do it worse, in my opinion. Like, what are you going to, you know, do with Picard's character that is not Picard? It's, it's just, you could feel it's not him. You knew that in season one. Like, and you have these articles where Patrick Stewart's talking about, you know, what he demanded to do on the show and what he didn't want and stuff. And I'm sorry, you know, I love him, but that's not what this should be. Uh, Whatever kind of project this was for him, and maybe it's a love. Look, we're all humans. We have brains, and, you know, like I said, this is not something you just fucking stop caring about the person's, uh, you know, health and career. But for fuck's sake, man, what are you going to do? Season three, oh, let's get Riker back and LaForge, and let's get Beverly. Let's just do the whole fucking thing. And guess what? You have a cameo in here from Wesley Crusher. Will Wheaton at the last episode or so, and I don't, I don't know it. Like, it should have been more impactful. And granted, the parting scene between Q and Picard it works, and this is great actors, right? When they want to be, and Q John Delancey is just fucking spot on from beginning to end. It's just that you didn't get the other aspects of Q that you would wanted to have seen. But this is culminating into a blitzkrieg at the end of gotta wrap it up what the fuck do we do let's forget everything before because we need this to happen need that to happen and for what it just boggles my mind green light this thing for fucking two seasons and i've said this before on my other podcast if it wasn't for lower decks being not only something i like but something i recognize and would argue is high quality i just finished prodigy i'll say the same thing about that i loved it and i think it is quality strange new worlds uh discovery i'll argue maybe debate with you why this isn't a quality season but i could kind of see why people like it i mean i don't get it you you're just gonna i guess just the way i like green lantern and i my brain just excuses all the bullshit. It happens in this, and there are people who are going to like it. But I cannot fucking recommend this. And now looking back at season one, I told you to tell people, stay the fuck away from this show. Especially if you love The Next Generation. Because I don't know what would happen if you brought a new person into this. 
So, like, maybe the odds would be better if I showed them Discovery first and showed them the fucking, um, murder fucking, you know, Star Trek murder escape or whatever the fuck it is and all the craziness that happens in there. And by the way, love that actress. So many actresses in every, in all these shows are fucking amazing. But you can only give them so much and write so much for them and just not make sense, not have fucking, you know, storylines that come together and fluidly and feel good and don't break every rule you've made. And by the way, one of the rules you make about make breaking rules is breaking that rule with time stuff. So what is the point of all this? Uh, like I said, it's it's... Continuing from season one, a year and a half later, Space Animali. Ball comes in. Boom. Self-destruct. What happened? We're in fucking fascist, uh, you know, confederation world. Same fucking year, right? Same thing. What happened? Oh, something happened in the past. It fucked up the future. And Earth and all its members have extermination day. There are trophy rooms. and speeches and it's just fucking stupid stupid done so much better in more campy fucking sly slick ways in other ones and even going back to the original it's just give me fucking someone using a shitty atari fucking controller box and have them control their fucking brain picard's brain and move around the streets and fucking pick fruit and steal shit, like, it just makes more fucking sense. Some of this is just garbage. Some of the dialogue is some of the worst I've seen. And, let's be honest, the Technobabble in Star Trek got pretty ridiculous. But when you look back at the past episodes, like, when you highlight some of these, there are strong themes that resonate with today. But they're done right. They feel natural. And even the ones that don't are done with a much more uh, finesse, more quality. And there are some episodes in Star Trek, which is what it's famous for, is you're three quarters of the way through the episode and you go, holy shit. You have that, you roll your eyes and go, I get it now. Like, I see where it was going, the, the allegory, the, you know, how it connects to what's going on today. Or you could be blatant about it with the old original series. And one guy is half black and half white. The other guy is half white, half black on the opposite sides. And he says to him, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? You both are goes, No, he's black on the right side. I'm white on the... Like, yeah. Overpopulation episodes and time travel and causation with time. This has all been done. How could you fuck this up? I don't fucking get it. You turn the bug and you just fucking upend it and make bullshit out of it? Let's be honest. They, the bug job to fucking Voyager, but it was at the expense of the crew's struggle to get home. And in the comics, it would be like plot induced stupidity. Where you know Captain America shouldn't be beating, you know, fucking Magneto, but he comes through and finds a way to beat him. It's that type of thing. And. It, it, you see it happen in the comic books where, you know, when you get on the debates on the forums, yes, I was part of those fucking forums. Debating nerd shit, like who would win, Superman and fucking Shazam. Like, just, just, it's just I don't want to, just fucking nonsense. I, I, I've, I don't see the point in so much of this bullshit. The fucking Borg worked with Voyager. And yes, I know there are honest and legitimate concerns about job in the Borg, making them look weaker. And I get it. But at the time, it was, this crew has to outsmart the fucking Borg and get home. They can't take a detour. So they make a stand and they get through with ingenuity and coming together. I love Voyager. And yeah, it was rocky here and there, of course. I mean, most of the shows was. Except for DS9, I think, which probably is the best of them all. But I can't praise this. I can't find fucking much shit to say except for this fucking actress who I'll say a fucking again. Okay? Orla Brady. You'll find, for me, I recognize enough from other things and I can't believe how good she is and stuff. So, yeah, maybe I have a fucking crush at 50 
fucking one years old. But guess what? I would have wanted to have a crush on my Star Trek itself, the franchise. This is garbage. It muddies the water. It fucking dilutes the legacy of one of the most important characters in history when it comes to Star Trek. Picard had the movies, and I mean, he even started, what did he do? I don't know what they did. Four or five movies? Let's say five, four movies, just to be safe. Kirk had his movies. They had their errors. But when you look back, everybody looks back at Picard, and he's that guy, right? You know, just throw it away, because Patrick Stewart wants to play it this way, and he wants to take control of the writing, and, like, where does it end? Like, I don't know. How much leeway do you give these people? I'm watching a show I should be fucking raving about. And, again... I should be raving about it, even if I said I loved it, but holy shit how bad it was. But man, I got my nostalgia, I got my kicks out of it. I can't even say that. And that means a lot. If I had a big fucking following, and like you know, people who really knew me. This is fucking disappointing on so many fucking levels. I'm just being almost insulted by how fucking... They tried to pull this off. And, you know, you can you can just do so much better. I mean, I don't have to come up with fucking my own plot lines, but right now I'm just saying, take this and make it a two-hour fucking thing, fan edit, and you'll probably fucking do a, it'll gain a lot more fucking credit, critics praise. Because I'm going to be really surprised if I, if I see all fucking praise for the show. Now, I get you're going to see certain praise because there are just shills out there and there are people who are going to love it and je- like, there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't want to see people I trust and legitimately go forward to see like their views. And I do tend to look at people who I generally don't have an agreement with on general things and most things. But I like their methods and how they'll come to a conclusion and give their opinion on something like me who... You know, I'm not going scene by scene and showing things on my screen and, you know, pausing it and stuff. But I have no doubt I can make a case of how fucking bad this show is. I just, you know. And then, like I said, you're racing to the end, bog new, job the bog fine, you did something weird. And you know what? You got to save your money for good special effects when you're doing Star Trek Picard. You can't have some movie quality stuff and then some fucking hijinks like... Sorry. Post-production. Call the company. Get a couple extra mil. Whatever the fuck you gotta do. Because it's littered throughout the show. And there's those shows where it feels like they just did this because they didn't have a budget. I mean, there are, there are scenes and setups in here where you're like, minds boggled. Like, why are they doing it? And you can feel the cameras closed off. Like, there's a set piece type thing going on. And it's trying to give you a wrote a scope of things but it's failing and you know I can look back at the Lord of the Rings movies when they first came out and you'll notice a little bit of a jarring when they try to do some of the size alteration things you know and you're like wait hold on a second and those movies are insanely praised because you did it well you tried to do your best and it shows the love in there you know they kind of corrected it or did, you know, what the best they could. And you can allow those things in a show. And especially uh, especially if I love something, I'm going to fucking allow it. But, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just so disappointed. I really don't know how much more I'm going to go. It's like a fucking hour of this shit. I was totally tempted to put the big sucks red fucking thing on this fucking thumbnail. But I can't find it. So, I guess it escapes that. Uh, Picard Season 2 could be the worst season of Star Trek ever created. I could, you know, almost say that convincingly. So, watch it at your own risk. I hope people like it, you know. I don't want Star Trek's franchise to be fucking shit on. I don't even want to do these things and come off as angry or shitting on things if they really deserve it. Right? I mean, I did that for like... The Batman movie, mm, fucking shitty Robert Pattinson 
fucking garbage fest, dumpster fire. This is almost this is almost worse because I'm going through ten fucking hours of this. So watch at your own peril, I guess. I hope everybody's doing well. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.